Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to show you how to remove the graphics card cooler and how to reapply the thermal paste. Um, this is just in case you want to apply a better solution or in some cases some graphics cards are not really um, well made in terms of application of the thermal paste. So maybe you want to reapply and that's what this video is about. Now for this you would need obviously lots of cleaning pads. These are just uh, like a facial wipe, something like that. Um, some cotton buds and some surgical spirit or rubbing alcohol, um, same thing basically. Now here I just select a few screwdrivers. Now I did select one of these, which would be the main screwdriver. However, I did select one size uh, bigger and just a standard screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, just in case. Also, just in case I took this uh, tooth floss. Now the reason for that is Instead of trying to pry open um, the cooling solution, uh, sorry, the cooler of the of the GPU, and basically trying nearly to break the PCB, you could just simply use something like that just to separate them in between. Um, I wouldn't highly recommend doing that. However, it's sometimes better than just ripping the thing off the actual uh, PCB and components. Um, now, why I'm doing this? Well, simply because I have this GPU. Now, this GPU is NVIDIA GTX, uh, or oh, sorry, 8800 GTX. It's a, quite an old card. At the time, it was about $600. At the moment, it's worth about 30, um, 35 at best. And so, yeah, let's get started. Now, first things first, uh, most of the nuts and bolts holding everything on the other side. So as you see here, we have three, six, nine, 11 um, screws holding it. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna use obviously the screwdriver that fits and we're gonna do them one by one. So now that everything is removed, what I would do is I would look here and here we have um let's have a look there is one bolt holding it onto pcb let's see if i can remove that as well just basically separate as many things as possible and also especially if you have different type of bolts and things like that just pay attention to the where they were and well try not to lose them so at the moment, it seems like that's pretty much it. Now this thing should come off, but there's another two. So basically keep doing this until pretty much all the screws that you can see are loose. So you can start um, removing the cooling solution. Now, don't do this, these things um, in a hurry. First things first, obviously, you have to make sure that you will be able to assemble everything back together again and also you don't want to break anything which is a worst case scenario um, so here i have a connection for the fan we're going to unplug that and i'm going to try to gently lift it up and as you see it already starts lifting up which is good there's a little bit of resistance um, which you will nearly always have and the reason for that is simply because, well, the pace could, um, could be set for a long time um, in case of this GPU, for instance, which has been nearly five years. And it might be a little bit hard to easily remove it, which would be great if it was the case, but not always. So I'm going to just remove some more screws from the front. And also I'm going to do this. I'm going to have just a small... Um, pliers and going to try to remove them as well. Okay, so I've uh, loosened up as much as I could. I've removed the front, as you see, and that should come off nice and easy now. I try to wiggle it a bit and let's have a look. Oh, there we go. So it wasn't that bad. And once you do that, the PCB stays with all the RAM modules and the GPU. As you see, it's quite a big uh, GPU, physically um, big, basically because this was an old process used. And as you see, um, all the RAM modules and other components on the PCB were connected to this fan, to this heatsink, 
in order to um, get the heat off it. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use these wipes, going to put some rubbing alcohol, clean off here, off here, and then I'm going to use dry wipes just basically to remove any left residue. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to come back to you with a clean product. All right, so that's the end result. Basically all the residue and everything like that, all the old thermal paste is clean off both parts, the cooling and the graphics cards. Um, also what I found was very handy is this thing and also an old electric toothbrush or even the old head just went into all crevices and then I could just remove it like so all the dust and things like that. Now this particular thing I did um, show on my channel before is basically used to clean the all the dust off the camera lenses and things like that but I found it really useful in the computer cases and things like that as well. Um, obviously you don't need to refill it like some air canisters. Um, anyway, next I'm going to be applying this thermal paste. Uh, I have some Arctic Silver 5. Now the way to apply in this case is um, the area for the GPU is quite big. So what I would do is like this. I would apply a couple lines like so and later it would spread and here I'll just put small dots. Uh, so yeah here I can apply just a little bit um, the reason for that the actual chip is as you see here so that's the actual area that needs to be cooled so you don't need to whack a um, ton of it and sim similar idea here just a nice thin line because the components are pretty small um, so main thing is your RAM modules and obviously your GPU you can apply another thin line here it's not necessary to draw all the lines like that really but sure why not it was even more um, when I removed everything so next I'm going to join the two pieces together now to do that um, it probably would be ideal to align it very well from the first go so you don't need to do it again so Let's have a look from here. I don't have a good look. So what we will try to do is I'm going to just try to make sure that enough light is um, shed on the GPU so I couldn't, oh, sorry, on the PCB so I could see through. And I can see through these holes that I'm aligning them more or less okay. And once you're happy with it, you just simply drop it on and you don't need to wiggle much or anything like that. It's ready. And next thing, obviously, you're going to take back the same nuts and bolts that you used. And for that, I would use the usual fashion. So let's go with the GPU itself. Don't need to over tighten at this point. The main thing is that you secure a couple points which will ensure that the whole thing doesn't go sideways while you're playing with it. And that's very important because if the whole thing starts sliding away you will need to clean a lot of mess and you will need to reapply everything again. So yeah, from now on, it's your own creativity, which way you want to reapply these nuts and bolts. Um, for me, I'm just going to go from side to side, random fashion, and put them all in and tighten them. And once I'm done, I'm going to show you the result. All right, so I'm back and that's basically it. Next thing, um, just all the accessories. So this is going to go on top like so. And then I'm going to attach this on the side and um, yeah, obviously use all the screws that I still do have. And once everything is done, um, I'm going to just basically talk a little bit about the end result and uh, should you or should you not do it. 
So guys, and I'm back. Now, the end result is obviously the graphics card is cleaner of any dust because obviously it was able to clean it inside out. Um, the only my disappointment is that this particular graphics card, now I know newer graphics cards are a little bit different in terms of thermal paste application from the factory, but this particular one, um, I won't be able to show on the camera, but the RAM modules just about touch with the actual um, cooling solution and uh, the thermal paste is just about enough to fill that gap as you saw um, when I removed the uh, the shroud and I when I separated the two parts together um, <clears throat> and when I separated the two parts you could see this like a like some sort of a cloth with a cooling paste on it so obviously when I apply some th something liquid as Arctic Silver 5, it's not quite ideal for this um, situation. Now, once the thermal paste will set in, uh, meaning I will do some um, nice and easy benchmarks, nothing overheating the card or anything like that in the beginning, monitor temperatures, monitor stability, that thermal paste should spread around and set in and it should be fine. However, you should be very careful with doing uh, things, uh, jobs like that and you should ensure really that you have adequate um, solution. This was okay for the GPU but it wasn't great for RAM modules. So yeah guys, um, let's go to the main question I suppose. Should you do it? In my opinion, no. Unless you have a really good reason to do it, uh, something like for instance your temperatures are really spiking up and it shouldn't be and you did check on the internet the comparisons of the same GPU where the temperatures were completely different and let's say you're out of the warranty because obviously if you have warranty you should just replace the card but if you're out of warranty and you sh this is your last resort or if you're install installing some different type of cooling for instance a water cooling then obviously you will need to remove it anyway. Um, so yeah do it at your own risk maybe a graphics card like that, disassemble it and have a look at it yourself. That's why I made this video basically to find out how these graphics cards are attached to the cooling solution and how many things um, can go wrong and well in my opinion it's not such a hard task. However, um, if, you, if you have okay temperatures and if you don't overclock like Matt and there's no good reason to remove the cooling solution and reapply thermal paste just don't do it. So yeah guys if you have any comments leave them at the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.